My sister Chelsea has always had a way of making things go her way. As soon as December started, she was in full holiday mode, planning an extravagant Christmas party. We need to go big this year, Taylor, she said firmly. Order a bunch of appetizers and some steaks. I sighed, following her instructions as usual, placing the order she wanted and packing everything up for her. That was Chelsea, always bossy, always making demands without any consideration. When she and her husband began fussing over decorations, I quietly excused myself, hoping to escape her controlling behavior. I thought about my own life, far from this chaos. My name is Taylor, a 32-year-old office worker, and I've been happily married to Orland for a year. Life was peaceful with him, but whenever Chelsea came into the picture, peace always seemed to disappear. Orland and I lived with his mother, Kyla, who welcomed me with open arms after Orland's father passed away. Moving in with her wasn't something I initially wanted, but Kyla's warmth made it easy to settle in. She taught me her recipes, treated me like family, and I found a new happiness living as a family of three. Life with Orland and Kyla was wonderful, and I felt lucky to be part of such a loving home. But my own family, especially Chelsea, always seemed to pull me back into old troubles. Chelsea's demands, her need for control, and her ability to stir up drama never really stopped even though I had hoped to keep a safe distance. Still, I had a feeling that this Christmas would force me back into her world. Three years ago, our father passed away, leaving my mother alone in the family home. Chelsea moved in with her husband, promising she'd take care of mom. But things quickly changed. Within a few months, as soon as mom's health began to decline, Chelsea found a way to put her in a care facility. The most painful part was that I didn't hear it from Chelsea. I heard it from mom herself when I visited. Mom didn't want to worry me, but I could see the sadness in her eyes. She missed her home, and I could tell she felt abandoned. When I confronted Chelsea, she got defensive, saying, You don't understand, Taylor. We were the ones taking care of her. You weren't there. It was the same excuse she always used, and it cut me deeply. She had no right to treat mom that way. Even though mom was well cared for at the facility, I couldn't shake the feeling of guilt. I visited her as often as I could, but each time, I felt a mix of sadness and relief. Mom was adjusting, but I knew that she would have preferred to stay at home, close to her memories. Meanwhile, Chelsea hadn't visited her once. Chelsea had always looked out for herself first, leaving others to pick up the pieces. It was her way, and I had learned long ago to guard myself against her manipulations. But as Christmas approached, I had an uneasy feeling, knowing that she might find some way to pull me back into her plans. I was right to worry, as I would soon find out. One evening, I got a call from Chelsea. Her tone was blunt and to the point. I'm bringing mom back to the house for Christmas, she announced without a hint of warmth. But you'll need to handle the caregiving. We're busy with party preparations. I was stunned by her demand. Wait. Caregiving? I asked, trying to process her words. I thought this was just a family gathering. Chelsea, in her usual dismissive way, replied, Mom wants to be home for Christmas. You're her daughter too, right? Before I could say anything else, she hung up, leaving me feeling unsettled. I knew something was off, and I couldn't ignore the suspicion that Chelsea's motives were not as kind as she made them sound. I decided to visit mom at the care facility before agreeing to anything. Mom, did Chelsea talk to you about coming home for Christmas? I asked gently. Mom smiled, though there was a hint of uncertainty in her eyes. She said it would be nice to spend the holiday together, she replied softly. I could tell she wanted to believe in the family spirit, but I couldn't ignore the feeling that Chelsea was up to something. She was always good at making things seem one way when the truth was quite different. I agreed to help make Christmas special for mom, but I had my guard up. When I shared my concerns with Orland and Kyla, they encouraged me to go. Family is important, Kyla reminded me with a gentle smile. Go make some memories with your mom. On Christmas morning, I picked up mom and drove her to Chelsea's house. As soon as we walked in, Chelsea greeted us with a big smile, but it felt forced. Welcome, she said. Taylor. Could you start by cleaning the guest rooms? 
she asked casually, as if I were a housekeeper instead of her sister. I hesitated but agreed, not wanting to start a fight in front of mom. I set to work, dusting and vacuuming, while Chelsea and her husband continued with the last-minute decorating. Just as I finished cleaning one room, my nephew Stuart began to follow me, dropping crumbs and scattering toys everywhere. Could you please stop that, Stuart? I asked, trying to be patient. But he only giggled, clearly not listening. Chelsea appeared, noticing Stuart's tears and immediately turning on me. Why are you making him cry, Taylor? She snapped. You have no idea how to handle kids. Her words stung, and I felt anger rising. He was just undoing all the work I just did, I said, trying to keep calm. Chelsea crossed her arms, looking at me with disdain. Kids make messes, Taylor. You wouldn't understand since you don't have children. Her comment was meant to hurt, and it did. Just then, Mom stepped in, gently taking Stuart by the hand. Come on, Stuart, let's go play, she said with a warm smile. Mom's kindness diffused the tension, and I was grateful. But my patience was wearing thin, and I knew this Christmas would be anything but peaceful. After cleaning, Chelsea handed me a long grocery list. Could you go buy everything here? She asked, sounding more like a demand than a request. The relatives will be arriving soon. I was taken aback. I hadn't realized we were hosting a big gathering. I thought it was just going to be us, I replied. Chelsea gave me a look as if I had asked something ridiculous. We're hosting a big Christmas, she said. It'll be good for our family's reputation. It hit me then. Chelsea hadn't brought mom back out of kindness. She wanted to show off to our relatives, to play the role of the devoted daughter. My stomach churned, but I kept quiet, grabbing the list and heading out the door. While picking up the groceries, I thought about mom and the way Chelsea was using her. It wasn't right, but I felt trapped. Mom wanted to be with family, and I couldn't take that away from her, even if Chelsea's intentions were selfish. By the time I returned, Chelsea's house was full of relatives, all laughing and admiring her for taking care of mom. She was smiling, accepting all the praise with a satisfied expression. I wanted to tell everyone the truth but I knew it would only cause more trouble. As I watched her soaking up the attention, I felt an urge to finally stand up to her. I had had enough of being used and manipulated. That evening, as the party continued, Chelsea showed off mom to everyone, making it seem like she'd done everything to care for her. Meanwhile, I was left to cook, clean, and make sure mom was comfortable. After hours of being treated like a servant, I felt my anger boiling over. Chelsea approached me with a smug smile. Don't expect any thanks for this, she said. Family helps each other, isn't that right? Her words stung, but I didn't react. Instead, I felt a new resolve building inside me. I had done everything I could for this family, and it was time to stop letting Chelsea take advantage of me. I knew what I had to do. After the party, I quietly told mom it was time for us to leave. She looked relieved and nodded, gathering her things. As we headed to the door, Chelsea's smile disappeared. Where are you going? She demanded. This is supposed to be a family night. I looked her straight in the eye, feeling a calm strength I hadn't felt before. We're done here, Chelsea, I said, and don't expect us to come back. Her face turned red, but I didn't stay to see her reaction. As I helped mom into the car, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. We headed to Orland's home, where warmth and love welcomed us. Finally, I knew we were free from Chelsea's control. This Christmas, I had found the strength to stand up for myself and mom, and that was the best gift I could have given us.